Suppose you have a .NET front end and you have a .NET back end. How can we connect them? How can we connect them easily? Let's bring the glue to our full stack .NET application, Bug Porter. So last time we added a form to our .NET MAUI front end that will allow users to report a bug. And on our backend Azure Functions API, we already exposed an endpoint where clients can report a bug and that bug will get propagated to a GitHub repository. But the issue right now is that our .NET MAUI form to report a bug doesn't do anything. It's not connected to our backend API, so the user will go ahead, they'll fill out the form, they'll click submit, and the bug just goes nowhere. Our users are not going to be satisfied. So overall, we need to connect the report bug form on our .NET MAUI front end to our Azure Functions backend API. And essentially what that means is when the user submits the form to report a bug from our .NET MAUI front end, we need to make an HTTP POST request to the report bug endpoint on our Azure Functions API. So typically making an HTTP request, we're gonna have to spin up an HTTP client, we're gonna make the request, we're gonna manually deserialize the JSON response, and spinning up the HTTP client manually and doing all of this overhead to just make an HTTP request to our backend is kind of a pain. So instead, we're gonna let the wonderful refit package do this for us. So refit is a REST library for .NET, and all we have to tell refit is the URL of the endpoint that we want to hit, the HTTP method that we're going to execute, so we get a post, etc., and the request and response types to and from our API. And with that information, we'll be able to just use a method to make an HTTP request to our backend. And most importantly, we won't have to manually spin up an HTTP client. So in our .NET MAUI frontend, let's go to manage NuGet packages. We're going to search for refit and install refit. We also want to install refit.http client factory, and this will provide extensions so that we can register our refit interfaces in dependency injection. So let's install this. Now with refit, we need to define an interface where we can tell refit the endpoint that we want to hit, the request and response types, and the HTTP method that we want to execute. So this interface, since this is related to reporting a bug, this is going to get executed when the user clicks submit on the report bug form, we're gonna have all of this live inside of the report bug feature slice. So going for cohesiveness based on vertical slice architecture, let's add it to this feature slice. And we're gonna put it in its own subfolder, we'll call this API, and let's add our refit interface. So an interface, we'll call this the I report bug API command. Let's create that. So on this refit interface, we first need to define a method that will later execute to hit our backend API. This is going to have to be a task since we want to hit our API asynchronously and not block the UI. And we'll just call this execute. So calling this method will hit our backend API, but we're going to have to tell refit how to hit our backend API. So we're going to tell refit that we want this to be a post request whenever we call this method. And we want to hit our slash bugs endpoint. So if we look over at our API, the endpoint for our report bug Azure function is bugs. So we want that to match on our refit interface. We can also see that our report bug Azure function takes in a report bug request through the body and responds with a report bug response. So we're gonna have to tell refit about these request and response objects. So for now, let's just copy over these request and response objects from our API and drop those in our .NET MAUI client. We'll just put them right next to our refit command. And let's update the namespaces on these request and response objects. And now we can tell refit that making a post request to this bugs endpoint is going to return a report bug response, and we can pass in a report bug request. And this is really all we need to make a post request to our backend API. No spinning up an HTTP client, no dealing with serialization or anything, quite simple with refit. So that being said, let's use this refit command and execute this post request when we submit the report bug form. So in the report bug command, this is tied up to our view model. This is what gets executed when we click submit on our form. Let's add a field for our I report bug API command. That's our refit command. Let's import that. And we'll inject that through the constructor. Now let's take that refit command and we'll execute it. This will give us back our report bug response from our API. And we're also gonna have to pass in a report bug request 
for the bug that we want to create. So we can instantiate one of those and we can grab the properties off of our view model. So these view model properties are linked up or binding to the entries on our UI. So this will represent the summary and description that the user actually typed in. And we can pass that request along to our backend API. Now this is an HTTP request, so it could fail. There could be some kind of network outage. There could be some kind of auth issue with our GitHub repository. So let's wrap this in a try catch. And let's add some message boxes here. So we'll first have a success message box. So we can use application, current, main page, display alert, and .NET MAUI rather than message box, because I believe message box back in like the WPF and WinForms day is only going to work on Windows, whereas display alert is .NET MAUI related. So it's going to work on all of these .NET MAUI platforms. Now we do have to dig into the main page here, which you might feel is a violation of MVVM principles because basically our view model layer knows about our view. We can work around that later, but I feel comfortable doing this for now. Anyways, in this alert, we'll add a title of success, a message for successfully reported bug, and we'll add the bug ID that we created. And for errors, not much different. So we're gonna display another alert. We'll have it titled error, and we'll say failed to report a bug, and we'll be able to click OK to close it. Hooray! We are using our refit command. We're gonna make a post request to our backend API. Now, we just need to set this up in dependency injection so that we can inject this interface into our command. So let's move up to where we instantiate this command in our view model. So we're gonna to have to pass in some kind of report bug API command. We can add that as a parameter to this view model. And let's move up to where this view model is referenced. And that's gonna be all the way up in our dependency injection setup. So now we just need to register our refit command in dependency injection, and we'll resolve it in our view model and pass it along to our command. So in dependency injection, let's take our builder services and we're going to add a refit client. So this is part of the refit HTTP client factory package that we installed. And the type of our refit client is our I report bug API command. So the refit commands that we previously created. And lastly, we need to point this refit interface to our Azure Functions API. So we are referencing our slash bugs endpoint, but we need to tell refit the base URL of our API. And we can do that by configuring the HTTP client that refit is gonna use under the hood. And we wanna set the base address to a new URI, and we're just gonna point this to localhost. So this is the endpoint or the base URL, I should say, of our Azure Functions API. So ultimately, reporting a bug is gonna make a request to localhost 7071 slash API slash bugs. And obviously when we're in production, we're gonna have to point this base URL to our production Azure Functions API, but we'll deal with that once we get into deployments. So is this everything? Are we ready to test this out? Yes and no. So the one thing that we're missing is authentication. And right now in our .NET MAUI front end, we haven't really done anything with authentication. So we're not gonna deal with that right now. We're not gonna pass in some kind of token to our backend API. And for testing purposes, we're just gonna comment out all of the authentication logic on our Azure Functions API. And just for testing purposes, just not gonna be enforcing authentication. So getting into testing, how are we gonna test this out? How are we gonna run our backend and our front end together in Visual Studio? Well, if we go to our solution and go to properties, we can select start our project over here and we wanna start multiple projects at once. And we wanna select our API and client and make sure those are marked as start. So now both our front end and our back end will start up when we click start. So let's start debugging. So here we go, filled out the report bug form. Let's submit, here we go, executing. Oh, failed to report bug. Alrighty, so after tons of debugging, I finally figured out why it seems like our Azure Functions API isn't receiving our bug request. And first off, on this refit interface, we need to specify that this report bug request is gonna get serialized into the HTTP request body. So let's add that. And additionally in refit, this HTTP request body 
is streamed into the HTTP request without buffering. And a side effect of that is that we don't pass up a content length header in our HTTP request. And from what I was observing, Azure Functions was having trouble deserializing this HTTP request body, even though Azure Functions was clearly receiving the body content. I even saw it on the raw HTTP request object. It just wasn't being deserialized correctly. So to work around that and get a content length header passed along with our HTTP request, we can set buffered to true. So here we go, let's try this again. Let's report this bug. And there we go, it works this time. Let's check this out in our repository. And here we go, the issue was created. And let's commit these changes in source control. So while we were connecting to our backend API, you may have noticed that we copy and pasted our request and response objects from our API project to our .NET MAUI project. Now what if our request and response objects change on our API? Then we're gonna have to propagate those changes to our client as well. So how can we avoid that manual updating? Well, instead, we can move our request and response objects to a shared project, and then our API and client can reference that shared project, and we can put our request and response objects in that project, and then we won't have to update those in two places. So let's start by creating that shared project. So we're gonna add a new project, and this is gonna be a class library. So a shared project that our API and client are going to reference. And we're gonna call this bugporter.core. We'll target .NET 6 like our other projects and create. So ultimately, we want our report bug request and response objects to live in our core project. So these are part of the report bug feature. So let's follow this feature slice approach or vertical slice architecture approach in our core project as well. So let's add a folder for features and inside here, another folder for report bug, the report bug feature. And let's grab the request and response object. We'll start with the ones from our client application and paste those in here. Let's update this namespace to match our folder structure. So this is bugporter.core.features.reportbug. And same thing for the response object as well. And now let's delete these request and response objects and our client, as well as our API. So delete those. And starting in our .NET MAUI project, let's add a project reference to our core project. And now that we've referenced this core project, we can import these request and response objects. So let's import that namespace. And there we go. We're reusing these shared request and response objects. And now let's do the same thing in our API. Let's add a project reference to bugporter.com core and let's import that namespace where we reference those request and response objects. Whoops, in our .NET MAUI client, we need to import the namespace in our report bug command as well. And now we can test this out. So make sure this works. And there we go, bug was successfully reported. And we can see our GitHub issue was successfully created. And we now have a core project for sharing our API objects. So are you trying to connect your .NET frontend to your .NET backend? Don't spin up an HTTP client manually. Don't get into the nitty gritty of serialization. Just use refit. All you have to do is provide an interface that tells refit the HTTP method that you want to execute, the endpoint you want to hit, and tells refit the request and response objects that you expect from the endpoint. And then you can register your refit interface in dependency injection via the refit.http client factory extension package and then all you have to do is use your refit interface which you can inject anywhere where you're leveraging dependency injection and execute the command that your interface exposes and if you want to take this one step further and keep your request and response objects in sync throughout your front end and back end then you can extract your request and response objects to a core project or shared project that your API and your front end depend on. So hopefully you can apply this to your own full stack.net application to simplify connecting your front end to your back end.